She's a 59 year old female. She has uh, pretty significant patellofemoral osteoarthritis. She has an effusion. She has a pretty large Baker cyst, and really the Baker cyst is bothering her. So we're going to try to drain the cyst. We're going to try to fenestrate the cyst a little bit, hopefully prevent it from coming back. And uh, we're going to inject with some cortisone as well. First, we're going to drain her knee. We're going to view some of the anatomy of the posterior knee, basically rotating it. We're going to focus on the again the posterior region where the Baker cysts are found. Here we can just see the capsule overlying the knee joint. Now we're bringing the neurovascular structures into view. Now we're bringing the deep muscles such as the popliteus and plantaris muscles in view. Here are some of the ligaments around the knee. And now we're bringing the lateral compartment in view and the hamstring muscles. Here's the overlying soleus muscle. And finally, we got our gastrocnemius muscles. So that is essentially the framework that we need to know in order to understand the anatomy of Baker's cyst. Here is this Baker cyst in this patient. Basically a medium-sized type Baker cyst. Here you can see how the Baker cyst wraps around the medial gastrocnemius tendon. And then it's a concave lateral type of anatomy, or wraps underneath that medial gastrocnemius tendon between that and the semi-luminosis tendon. Here we're going to go through the procedure where we initially drained some of the cyst, and then we did our needle fenestration, and then we went ahead and tried to drain the rest of the cyst, and then we finally injected it with cortisone. So we initially drained some of the cyst, and now we're fenestrating the cyst with the needle, trying to go in and out of the wall. Here we're draining some more. We weren't able to completely drain the cyst as I believe some of the fluid is quite thick. And now towards the end of the procedure, we are going to inject with cortisone. Here you can see the needle in the suprapatella pouch during the beginning of this procedure. Also notice that the assistant is pushing on the medial side of the knee to try to push the fluid laterally. So here is this large Baker cyst right side of the screen is lateral. Again here you can see the Baker cyst between the semimembranosus tendon and the medial gastrocnemius tendon. Here you can see the semimembranosus tendon prior it was actually Black from anisotropy. Also, you can see a septum within the cyst as well. You can see a little septum there forming. So here's basically this large cyst right over the medial gastrocnemius muscle. You can see the semi membranosus tendon as we go medially. And here's a nice view of the semi membranosus tendon, yeah, quite a thick tendon, inserting on the posterior proximal tibia medially. So there may be some debris within this Baker cyst as well. Also, you can appreciate the little sulcus where the semi membranosus tendon inserts. The question is when should you break it up? You really only see the wall when it's filled up with fluid. But then again, you don't want a lot of fluid to track down the calf. Kind of like you don't want to mimic a ruptured baker cyst. So what I may do is just drain a little bit of it and then try to break it up. Here again, you can see the needle going in this inferior aspect of the Baker cyst. Sometimes you're actually just pushing some of that capsule proximally, and you're not actually in the cyst, so you got to make sure that you pop inside of it in order to drain it. Here we are fenestrating the cyst, going in and out of the inferior wall. Here we're in an axial view, and you can just see the needle tip, and this is good to basically get your medial lateral orientation. Again, when we're fenestrating the cyst, we're trying to fenestrate not just one part of it, but we're trying to cover a pretty good area of it. Yeah, I'm just kind of breaking up the back of this wall, okay? Mm -hmm. and this is really just to help you with your medial lateral orientation. Once you get that, you're probably just better off going in your long axis view and just really got out most of that cyst already. I probably 
might have been better off leaving a little more fluid in there just to kind of blow it up more and get more of the wall. 822. I'm going to try to drain the rest of it. So here's what was left of this cyst, essentially. I think this was filled with thick ganglionic type mm -hmm. fluid, which you see sometimes in Baker cysts. And essentially, we're still trying to finish rate it, trying to basically just mechanically break up the, the wall, the inferior wall. Sometimes you get this thick fluid in here, like a gelatinous kind of ganglion type fluid, but... All right, just gonna inject this with a little bit of cortisone, not as much as your knee. Mm -hmm. And we should be done with the procedure. Okay. Here's our cortisone injection. That's our cortisone with some saline in there. She's about two weeks into knee aspiration as well as Baker cyst aspiration slash Baker cyst fenestration. Uh, prior to the procedure, she was having pain in the back of her right knee. And how are you doing right now regarding the pain in the back of your, of your right knee? You don't feel so. You think that procedure in the back of the knee helped? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And overall, you feel better overall from both procedures. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. All right.